new, 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 new. Yeah, as you can tell, we have a little kid that we're singing to constantly. Singing so, <laughs> um, first up, revision. Okay, uh, we're uh, crawling along on these revisions, 450 revisions in. Uh, this week, it's a, a big enough revision. I want to highlight it. This is the ultimate GPS logging shield. People love it because it's USB, uh, sorry, it has SD card. Um, uh, one of our ultimate GPS is it has internal or external antennas. You can uh, attach a uh, active antenna um, to it as well. And then um, coin cell battery for RTC. And you can select what you want, software serial or hardware serial. But uh, the previous version did not use the ICSP pins. It was pre Uno R3. Yeah, it's been a while, but we were like, hey, we should revise this. Now you can use the 2.3 pin header uh, to select um, the SPI port or on the bottom there, there's three jumpers. If you have a really old style Arduino or an Arduino compatible that doesn't have a two by three header. Otherwise it's pretty much identical. I added a little, a little bit of a better ground plane as well. Um, it's otherwise functionally compatible, but now should work with more boards. Next up. Uh, next up, we've also updated the uh, motor hat for Raspberry Pi. It used to be you had to solder in uh, the terminal blocks and the 2x20 header. Now you don't have to. Now it comes fully assembled. Uh, so it should make it even easier for people who want to add motor control to their uh, Raspberry Pi projects. Uh, yeah. Here shown with a DC motor and a stepper, or you can drive two stepper motors. This is what it looks like now. So it comes with terminal blocks pre-attached, uh, pretty silk screen, and on the bottom is the um, slim style 2x20 header. I don't know why the thrill pads got filled with solder. I'm going to try to revise it for the next version. Um, to use this with uh, taller, you know, the not Pi Zero, which you can use it with. If you want to use it with like a classic Raspberry Pi, we give you a lifter header as well. Uh, so it lifts it above all the components. Okay. And next up, these are coming soon because we have them almost ready Long to be in the it. store. Long displays. Uh, this is a 4.6 inch long display uh, showing the long cat. It's 960 by 360 pixels color and it's an RGB 666 type display. So you can use it with our Qualia S3 board. You can't use it with a basic microcontroller. Um, you can use it with a board that has RGB TTL display support. Okay. Um, and then we have a square one. We also have a square 3.4, 480 by 480 display also coming soon. Uh, so we're going to get all these displays in. I think we only have the round ones in stock for now, but wetting everybody's appetite with some cool, yeah. uh, funky displays that will be available uh, very soon. Next couple of weeks, we're going to get all of them in stock to match up with our quality board. Yeah, so cute. expect these to be in stock soon. The star show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, our team... Our customers, our community, everybody makes a thing go is ba -ba 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 -ba, the Qualia. Yay, the Qualia S3. People have been seeing me work on this for a bit, a couple revisions through. Uh, so this is a board that I kind of designed for my own use because I want to test out all of these cool, weird displays like, uh, you know, this long rectangular display or this round display or the square one. Um, you know, basically, once you get past 320 by 240 pixels, you need to use uh, parallel RGB TTL display support, and not a lot of microcontrollers have that support. Usually, you have to go to the IMX RT series, but turns out the ESP32-S3, one of the cool things that they added, is they have support for these displays. Um, you only get 16-bit color, and it uses almost all the pins, but it does work. And uh, so you had a connector on here to let you use these cool displays. We'll later on make versions that are like round and rectangular and square and, yeah. you know, all in one. But this is a great uh, kind of starter dev board that will let you explore and experiment with these boards. And there's Arduino support and CircuitPython. Um, a lot of pins, you know, 16 RGB TTL displays, H-Sync, V-Sync, DE, and pin clock. We do have some pins left over on the bottom. We have four pins for uh, SPI and then um, two analog pins as well. So, you know, in Arduino, at least we have a one bit MMC um, connection plus I2S. So you can do video playback with audio based on um, Cinepack. So we did a little, you know, example demo of that. And I think in the product description, we linked to the, the Cinepack demo. Um, 
but basically it's like you want displays up to 720 by 720 or 800 by 480. Um, these displays will be able to uh, be run with um, this device. They just snap onto the end. Uh, and then you also have STEM IQT um, connector, so adding I2C. So I2C pins are available, two buttons that go through expander. One thing to watch out for is these displays are a little bit more complicated than most. You need to SPI initialize them. And so we have initialization code. And then after you've done SPI initializing them, then you can blast out pixels and you have to blast the pixels out repeatedly. So they use a lot of PS RAM. They use a lot of the CPU capabilities um, because, you know, if you're if you, you can't get to the PS RAM while it's uh, trying to display it uh, through the cache to the display. So it's like you're not going to get like it's using a lot of the capabilities of the S3 um, and you can do like basic animations, basic videos, uh, graphics, of course, in Arduino and then in CircuitPython, you know, graphics, REPL and more. So I thought um, I'll just go to the overhead and I could show just quick. Yeah. And uh, yeah, one one note too. So Qualia is the, the name of all the types of displays we're doing. We're finally able to do all the types of displays we want. So we'll call things like this board, the Qualia S3 or the Qualia, you know, ESP32 yes. S3. So you'll be able to know like, oh, Qualia, that's a type of display technology that Adafruit has, you get all this stuff with it. And then also it works with all these different types of screens. So yeah, square screens. So the thing is that the pinout it works with doesn't work with every screen with a 40 pin display, but usually these, I call them RGB 666. They have six uh, bits red, six bits green, six bits blue. And then they often have capacitive touch here on the side. So like, you know, this 3.4 inch square, this round display, this like huge round display, um this bar display these uh non-rectangular ones tend to uh work the best what you know if you see something that's a 480 by 272 or 800 by 480 that may not match you'll have to make sure that you have the right pinout um on here for it to work um there's a backlight driver so a little booster to drive the backlight um this is just running an arduino demo that shows uh you know it's it's tough to see but it's a, a color swirl on the display and then this is, hopefully this live demo will work. This is running uh, CircuitPython. Um, so it goes to the internet and uh, this is like my moon clock demo. Um, it gets the IP address. Oh wait, I think I reset it right before it. It's a little slower. Um, it gets the IP address and then it tries to um, find the moon phase and displays the moon, except it's it's not working, so that's my live demo. Um, so rah, rah, rah. yeah, I know I was messing with it. Don't worry, we have a video that we recorded. We have a demo, yeah, yeah we have a video sure. that I'll show. Well, it just got merged into mainline like literally an hour ago. Uh, but the Arduino demo works great. So um, you know, as we get each display working with this board, um, we'll document it so people can get up and running really quickly. Um, you know, these displays get you know, they get fairly big, like this. Yeah. This four inch diagonal 720 by 720 round is like, could make for a beautiful clock display. Um, you know, we could do some Halloween projects with the gigantic eyeballs. Um, you know, all this stuff normally would be very hard to use. You'd have to have like an embedded Linux board, but you can have the simplicity of a microcontroller. So uh, yep. we have some in stock uh, to play around with. Um, I think it'll really unlock the ability of people to use these displays because it's going to be very well documented um with lots of example code yeah we um we saw what was going on in the world of electronics which is these displays are interesting they're out there but there was nothing besides maybe a demo for some of them and then folks are like well i got one and it just doesn't work so we wanted to make sure when we do it um you can do anything you want with it and it's fully documented it's open source and you can build cool things that is new products new 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 new